Good evening, everyone. My name is Tessa Jennison. I'm running for Kitchener City Council for Ward 9. I'm a graduate of University of Waterloo School of Planning, and I'm very active within our community. Thank you so much for hosting this event tonight. It's been incredibly informative. Um, before I, uh, I ran for council, I've, I've been quite involved in the community, and I thought I was reasonably well-versed in all of these topics, but it appears that I, uh, I have not been. It's something that I've learned by volunteering at local shelters and visiting a lot of our shelters to get a better understanding of what's needed in our community. Uh, I personally believe that all elected officials should volunteer at shelters to uh, develop a stronger understanding of the complexities of the situation and to develop a sense of empathy and dispel misconceptions and discourage blanket solutions. We need to make informed decisions based on actual needs through consultation and collaboration. I believe that we need to locate um, geared to income affordable housing near community services and resources and uh, avoid segregated housing by uh, incorporating a percentage of geared to income housing into, uh, into all new housing developments. Um, I think that one of the ways that we can streamline our services more effectively is by archiving services to track resources, identify needs, and to better uh, direct people who want to get engaged in areas where they can uh, use their own skill sets that they already have to contribute to the community. I believe that we need to engage in consultation with organizations but also with users of services to improve services based on feedback. With regard to access to information and digital inclusion, I believe we need more accessible info by providing uh, information in various media outlets to appeal to our diverse population. And we need to collaborate with multi the Multicultural Centre to ensure that information is accessible to ESL or non-English speaking residents. Councillors should be building relationships with community leaders to share info with community groups who can then pass along relevant info to their residents. With regard to civic participation in stronger uh, neighborhoods, when issues arise, governments are more likely to be receptive to a voice of a united group with a collective goal. So we should encourage the development of strong neighborhoods. And I have zero seconds remaining. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Because I write instead of speaking, so I always have to write. So excuse me if I read it. Thanks to the Social Planning Council and volunteers for this excellent meeting tonight. My name's Frank Etherington and uh, I'm the current incumbent council for Ward 9 seeking re-election. One of the most important issues debated tonight for me involved neighborhoods, healthy neighborhoods that make a vital downtown and city. I have about uh, eight neighborhoods in my ward, beautiful older neighborhoods in my inner city ward nine. They include Mount Hope, Cherry Park, Victoria Park, Mill Cortland, Cedar Hills, Highland, Sterling, and Rockway. If re-elected, I intend to give top priority to safeguarding those neighborhoods by continuing to work with residents, bylaw enforcement officers, police, and neighborhood associations to clean up eyesore properties and shut down crack houses. We've already, I've already done a couple of those things today. I'll continue to work with communities to make certain slum landlords are not allowed to hold entire neighborhoods hostage, and I will strengthen property standard bylaws. Uh, nurturing neighborhoods also includes overseeing the approval of uh, LRT. I'll consult with neighborhood groups to ensure redevelopment projects dovetail with existing housing as intensification takes place. For the past four years, I've worked closely with neighborhood groups. I'll continue to do so in the next four years if re-elected. In the last election, I won by a single vote. And this election, I plan to double my majority. <laughs> and no longer be called Landslide Frank. On October 27th, please vote. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Terry Ross. I've lived in uh, Kitchener since 1964. I'm uh, married, father of five, grandfather of six, so I plan to be in this community a very long time. There was a number of issues out there and it's very hard to distinguish between them all because they're not just, in, they may be individual issues, however, everything's enmeshed with each other. We can't just focus on one issue and then the other ones are gonna get missed. We can't do that. So the environment was one that came up. Uh, I personally, I have an e-bike, I use that, I walk when I can, but I do drive. I must admit that, and I've been driving during this campaign because 
I've got to take my lawn signs with me. Number of issues have come up. We have community gardens. Uh, they're great. They're all individualized though. We have to get the groups together to talk so we can now be a larger purchasing group. Treat it like a business. Get your non-GMO seeds. Get your heritage seeds. Get back to the beginning because what we goes into our bodies is what makes us healthy. We also have to worry about the intensification and variety in the developments that are going on. So what I mean by that is the infill structure, we have to gear it to include everybody, which is affordable housing, have businesses located there at the same time. When we're doing this structure, we're tearing down a lot of the environment. We can't do that anymore. Example are trees that are coming out. Uh, if we're going to be taking them down, we have to put more in. What goes in must be up to the homeowner. Personally, I would like to see more fruit-laden trees so we have a walkable community where you can walk, be healthy, eat, be healthy. Thank you. My name is Steve Strohack, and I'm running to represent Ward 9 on Kitchener City Council. I want to thank the Social Planning Council for hosting tonight's event and all the residents who took the time to discuss their concerns with the candidates. I believe that the issues discussed tonight can be addressed through the development of complete communities, including an accessible and efficient public transit system and open communication between City Hall and Kitchener's residents. When elected, I will focus on ensuring that we are building complete communities. To me, complete communities are those with basic elements to support economic opportunity and health for all people, regardless of income level, cultural background, or, profession, or political persuasion. These elements include a quality education, access to good jobs, access to affordable, healthy food and health services, and the ability to enjoy artistic, spiritual, and cultural amenities, including, also, <laughs> including meaningful civic engagement. We must also bring quality jobs to the region as they are a vital part of a vibrant community and healthy citizens. I believe that the final ingredient needed for truly complete communities is transparency. City Hall needs to develop a transparent program for assessing and deciding on development proposals. We need to guarantee that when it comes to planning for the future, that all citizens have a place at the table. Creating a vibrant economy and complete communities in Kitchener require all hands on deck. It's time for Kitchener to have a city council that actively recognizes their role in economic and social development. It's time to start working with our community partners, as well as our partners at the region, to start collaborating on an economic rejuvenation plan that supports progressive social policy in Kitchener. My name is Steve Strohack, and I ask you to believe in Steve. Thank you. Hi, I'm James Howe. Nobody wants to use a food bank. But they do. And they do in most cases because they can't afford a place to live. They have to make a choice between putting food on the table and putting a roof over their head. I think of that today um, because I really care about the concept of a healthy community, which really means that all these pieces come together and we have to care about poverty, pe people living in poverty, we have to live, care about strong neighborhoods, we have to care about intensification, we have to care about economic development, but we can't care about any of them at the exclusion of the others because they all affect each other. We could, for instance, eliminate the need for food banks if people had a place to live an affordable place to live. We're going to be intensifying our cores. We need to make sure that by intensifying our cores we don't build just for the affluent. We have to make sure that there's a mix of incomes and a mix of demographics. By having families in the core 
we can make sure that the core feels safe. If the core is safe for kids, safe for families, it's going to be safe for everybody and everybody will be in downtown Kitchener more. We have to make sure that we just don't um, attract high tech companies. We certainly need to foster them and support their growth, but not everybody is going to work for a high tech company. So all these pieces fit together. And I, my commitment to you is I will continue talking about them through my blog and working with you to make Kitchener the best place it can be. Um, running for Ward 10 City Council. Um, I know there's a, there's a lot of uh, talk about City Hall like it's, a, like it's a business. Can you guys hear me back there? No. Really? No? <laughs> Um, there's a, City Hall is run like a business. It, it's a corporation. And I think with corporations, uh, we sometimes lose our humanity. And we just, we just fixate on dollars and revenue and taxes. And we forget about the human beings that actually live here and make Kitchener their home. And a lot of times, people, uh, they, they can't always uh, afford to uh, to live in their homes and um, bad things happen and, and the city takes their home and destroys it like uh, you know in bulldozers like a scene from uh, Palestine and I don't I don't think this is this is okay that we should not be we should not be running a city in Canada one of the wealthiest nations in the world like they do in the Middle Eastern war zone that's not right. I think we need to return humanity to the city of Kitchener and respect people's freedoms inside the city and respect their freedoms to make free choices and to not impose decisions upon other people. I think that's a major problem we have with government today. And the basis of a, a strong nation is freedom. And that's not something that I've been hearing a lot about. And I think we, we need to restore freedom to government, to municipal, regional, provincial, and federal government, top down, all the way, and respect people's freedoms and rights. And I think all the problems we have will, will fix themselves with that. Thank you. I want to thank the Social Planning Council for hosting this session. It was very informative for me. I learned lots. From the discussions at the Social Planning Council, it became clear that of all levels of government, municipal governments are the closest to the daily lives of its citizens. Therefore, we can have meaningful impact, me and you. In the discussions, it became clear that we need to build resilience to threats in our ecosystems. It is an overwhelming task to address as an entire city or a region if we do it all at once. My starting point would be to build resilient streets first, where, resilience, where residents sorry, share a common interest and foster a sense of belonging. Once that is established, you can move on to growing neighborhoods the same way, with a common civic interest. With this comes increased capacity with which citizens find new ways for taking collective action on, on shared priorities. If ever there was a need for resilient neighborhoods and communities in Kitchener, that time is today. This is the only way to adapt to the challenges of change such as the environment, poverty, civil engagement, accessibility, inclusion, etc. And this is what I plan to do, is start from the grassroots. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Marsh and I'm running to represent Ward 10 at City Hall. <coughs> Thank you to the Social Planning Council and to the volunteers who made this even event happen and to all the uh, people watching online afterwards. Uh, I think that uh, it's really exciting to see a lot of engaged voters uh, and taking time to really <coughs> reflect on who they want to uh, vote for. So, uh, you know, uh, I have been a member of this community for most of my life. 
I actually worked at the Working Centre uh, years ago uh, when I was first starting out in my career and, uh, and I uh, have returned to work with them as a, a social researcher so I'm very well aware of a lot of the issues that were discussed tonight. But I want to just touch on a couple of themes that I noticed. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, whether I was at the table talking about how can social planning uh, take a role in addressing major issues like poverty and homelessness, or if I was at the table talking about accessibility and digital media, uh, you know what, uh, I found that I, I saw some similar themes and that was that people need to connect. People need to feel that they can engage in the important conversations that will help us to improve our community. So what can the city do about that? Well, first of all, we can go where the people are rather than try and just hold meetings uh, like this, which was very successful and high, uh, high turnout. But as a matter of fact, uh, when I was a part of uh, Compass Kitchener for the last eight years, uh, one of the things we found is when we held town hall meetings, they were poorly attended. Uh, but when we went to the market, when we went to uh, uh, places that people were already congregating, oh my goodness, did we have amazing engagement. And people said, wow, I've never had a meeting like this. We heard that over and over again, and this is the type of thing we need to continue. Uh, so I, I'm also excited about all kinds of opportunities, uh, just the percolating conversations that we had tonight. So I look forward to those continuing uh, once I'm your ward council. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Anthony Piscitelli, and I'm a candidate seeking a second term for the Waterloo Catholic District School Board. I'd like to discuss civic engagement. Over my first term as a trustee with the Waterloo Catholic District School Board, I watched as the board improved in its civic engagement efforts with the community, but we still have room to grow. I believe we can do a better job providing opportunities for Catholic families to engage with the Board of Trustees. We know that when parents are engaged in their children's education, their children succeed. This is why in my second term as a Board of Trustee, I will be advocating for the creation of a strategic plan to actively engage Catholic families, the diocese, and the wider Catholic community to understand what their issues are so that we can bring them to the table and discuss them as a Board of Trustees. This will ensure that Catholic families are driving the agenda of the board, not the board of trustees, not senior management, but putting the voice and the, and the ability of Catholic families at the center of our system. Thank you. Hello, I'm Renee Kraft, and I'm running for Catholic School Board Trustee in the upcoming municipal election. I saw a lot of and heard a lot of great conversations today, so I just want to go through the highlights. Thank you to the Social Planning Council for organizing this meeting today. I'll talk first about social planning and civic participation. Equity and collaboration are the guiding principles of, that the school board is founded on. If elected to school board trustee, I will improve collaboration with the school board, the trustees, the um, school council, and the community at large. Strong neighborhoods, accessibility, and inclusion. To me, that means a strong sense of community in the Catholic school system. To support a strong Catholic community, I think we need to bring the voice of the Catholic families forward. That includes those with disabilities, visible minorities, new Canadians, and First Nation peoples. Poverty is a continuing concern in the community, especially for our youth. If elected, I'll collaborate with various school par partners to ensure that the voice of the less fortunate are heard and that they feel included. Access to information from the school board could be improved. I will work to ensure transparency and accountability of the board for their decisions if I am elected. Digital inclusion to me means modernizing our approach to learning. If elected, I will collaborate with school board members, trustees, teachers, and the Catholic community to ensure that we are considering the right technology for the future success of our community. Promoting environmental sustainability in our schools is paramount for the future. On October 27th, I ask you to consider transparency, collaboration, accountability, and an active voice. Please vote for Renee Kraft. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Matthew Eckham, and I'm running to be your trustee for Waterloo Region District School Board. My background in community is I'm a chartered accountant. I have many years of financial expertise and experience, as well as I've experienced firsthand with operations of school boards as I, I participate in the, audit, in the audit procedures of a number of them. So 
the main item I'm going to speak to is civic engagement. So I'm going to commit to three items that I'm going to do if I get voted in as trustee. The first one is I'm going to commit to engage with the community through Facebook, Twitter, and uh, essentially I'm going to solicit feedback from them because we need, we need to know how we're doing as a board. And sometimes the board gets disconnected from the day-to-day -day realities of the people who it represents. The other thing I'm going to do if I get elected, I'm going to organize monthly town hall meetings at each individual school in which all of the trustees would get to come and meet parents, um, teachers, and students and get an understanding of the specific issues that each school faces. And that way we can be connected to people who we serve. And the, the other item I'm going to commit to is if I get elected, we need to stay connected to the population at large, the entire city. So we need to go where the people are. We need to go to Kitchener Market. And we got to have a monthly town hall there so that everybody gets a chance to have their voice heard. So in, in summary, if you vote for me, I commit to, to doing everything I can to increase civic engagement. I commit to being open, honest, and transparent. And I, I hope you consider voting for me for trustee. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Kuhn, and I'm running for public school trustee. Um, we've talked about a lot of uh, different issues tonight, and it's impossible to cover uh, all of them in two minutes, so I'll do my best. Um, I believe that uh, it's important that uh, all elected officials focus on civic engagement and participation. And if I'm elected, uh, what I believe is important, and this is something I've learned through campaigning, is that a lot of people don't realize the role of the school board uh, trustees in the community. So I think it's important that we reach out to uh, all groups and all people and just to let them know that we're here and why we're here and the role of trustees, which is primarily to be advocates for parents, for students, but also to be community leaders and create uh, create opportunities and relationships where possible within the community. Uh, part of that uh, flows really well in with strong neighborhoods. And uh, another thing I've noticed is that there's not really uh, good connections with the school board and the city. So I commit, should I be elected, to working with city councilors and city hall as well as neighborhood associations and community centers to uh, bridge those gaps and create relationships where possible. Also, accessibility and inclusion is important for everybody, um, regardless of gender, regardless of physical abilities, uh, regardless of all that. So I commit to um, helping to build a accessible and inclusive community. And finally, access to information. Um, I think it's important that where possible, um, public information, or sorry, public has access to the information uh, that they um, that they want to know about uh, about the different levels of government and what's going on, specifically at the school board with expenses. And that's my time. So thank you. If anybody has questions, I'll be here for a bit afterwards. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Fiona McAllister and I am running for the Waterloo Region District School Board, the public uh, school board in Kitchener. And um, I heard a lot of really great ideas uh, tonight and the two issues that really struck me the most, uh, struck a chord with me, were civic engagement and building strong neighborhoods or communities. Um, so I'm running for school board because I'm passionate about public education. I believe that a world class education is a right of every Canadian but also the responsibility of every Canadian. So. I think we should all work together as a community to ensure that our children achieve their fullest potential. So as a trustee, my responsibility would be to administer the services and programs that the, what the board offers and also to be a, a good steward of the financial resources of the board and also to act as a, a, a liaison for parents and students to help them access the services and programs that they need. But it doesn't end with school board trustees. I believe that teachers have a responsibility to use their passion for children and for education to help those children reach their fullest potential and to teach them the skills that they need. Oh, good grief. Anyway, um, and also I believe that it's also the responsibility of the parents and the larger community to ensure that children are showing up for school ready and able to learn. So for instance, if parents are not able to meet the, their children's needs with either food or clothing or their health needs, then the community as a whole needs to step up and help provide those services. 
And lastly, I also believe that it's the responsibility of the student to not squander the opportunity that people all over the world would give anything to have. Um, yeah, so I would say that we are all in this together as a community to provide our children with this great education, and I think that's a good thing because I think we're stronger together than we are alone. And if I talk a little bit of slur, I uh, have a broken tooth so it was bothering my tongue. But I will attempt to uh, tell you a little bit about myself and I have some issues tonight that, uh, that uh, do concern me. Uh, first of all, um, I'm a grandmother uh, bringing up three grandchildren uh, forever. I uh, have been doing it since uh, 18 years. Uh, one is presently in second year university. The other is in grade 10, and the other is in grade uh, 11. Uh, I've been on the school board before. Uh, I bring again uh, experience from being on the school board and working on various committees. What I do bring also is I have a gifted, a French immersion student, and a special education student and the school board has been very, very supportive of me. Uh, when I go out knocking on doors, uh, I notice we have a lot of social planning issues. Uh, one of the things that bothers me these days is parents are unaware of what is happening on the cell phone. And I really recommend that you find out exactly what is going on. Um, kids using cell phones are losing empathy. They are also losing the, they don't have, when they interact with people, the idea to read body language or to hear voices. That's a big issue in, in schools and in communities. The other is a poverty issue, and um, I deal with that, I sell, I have, Nutrition for Learning three days a week, and I'm astounded at what little we know. That's me. Hi, I'm Kathy Smith, and I'm running for uh, re-election to the Waterloo Region District School Board as trustee. Um, I'm running for re-election because um, I want to see to completion our equity and inclusive hiring process, uh, which I have been working with the board on for the last two terms. Um, and it's really important because we have so many people in our community that don't have access to um, being hired at our board. Um, I also, through tonight, I guess the one thing that, um, there are a couple of things that really resonated. One is the um, lack of knowledge within our broader community about the poverty levels that we have in, in, in the Waterloo Region. And um, people sometimes think that the only poverty that exists is what they see on the streets. And we have families where kids, are live, kids and parents are living in a van, um, living in a motel where there's seven people in a motel. And we really need to do something about um, raising awareness. Um, within the board, we're trying to make sure that those students have equal access. One of the things I'd like to raise uh, for this term is a conversation about having all year schooling because we know that kids who live in poverty would really benefit from all year schooling and that doesn't mean all year, it means having holidays broken up. Um, the other thing is um, the opportunity to explore other ways of, of educating students and we, we need to work with the provincial government to help them to understand that policies that are made in Toronto don't always play outside of the GTA. Um, so I really encourage everybody to consider voting for trustees because there's nothing more that we can do for students than um, to pro provide them with a great education. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Greg Burns and I'm running to represent you, Kitchener, on Regional Council this next term. I've enjoyed listening to and being a part of many important discussions tonight. And a special thanks to the Social Planning Council of Kitchener-Waterloo for hosting and giving us this opportunity for dialogue. As we've been talking, I've been noticing a common thread. Accessibility. Accessibility to services, to a voice in government, accessibility to physical buildings, community spaces, and the accessibility of feeling like a true part of this community. I'm hearing that we need to improve our interactions on many levels. While many movements are growing grassroots to gain accessibility, 
It also needs to come from the top down. Your elected leaders must be making space for all in a variety of ways. At one table, I heard about the lack of accessible parking uh, for downtown events. At another, I heard the financial burden of community events. And at another, the challenges faced as services move to online. All these accessibility issues arise from a desire to build a stronger community, but an oversight has left people feeling left out, and this needs to be addressed. With a systematic approach, I will consider all stakeholders to an issue, event, program, or service, and ensure that no one is left behind. A common element that I've heard in door knocking is that people do not feel heard or listened to. We need to continue to strive for creative ways to interact with the community and ensure that all voices are heard and valued. Whether this comes from a point of service surveys, mail outs, better use of social media, or door knocking, more than ever, our next four years, I'm excited to hear from you, you the better ideas to make the best region possible. Thank you. Thank you for regional council representing the city of Kitchener. My priorities are a more open and inclusive Waterloo region, a poverty-free Waterloo region, a livable and sustainable Waterloo region, and a prosperous Waterloo region. My intentions tonight were to sit at the various tables and listen to everybody's ideas and take one or two that I thought would support each of my priorities. But in fact, I couldn't do that because the ideas that I heard were so layered and so in interconnected that I couldn't say this idea fits that priority and that idea fits this priority. In fact, the ideas that really resonated with me were the ones that were so layered and in interconnected that I couldn't say that because they touched on and addressed all of my priorities at once. They were ideas like the importance of true conversations, of consultations that reach out to and engage all of the residents of Waterloo Region, the fundamental and foundational importance of affordable housing in people's lives, the role of public transit in relieving poverty and pro promoting environmental sustainability, and the power of safe, welcoming, and inclusive neighborhoods these are the things that were important to the groups that I visited tonight, and they're the things that are important to me. If I'm elected, I'll do everything in my power to make those ideas a reality in Waterloo Region. Thank you. Thank you. Great, okay. Good evening, my name is Cameron Gillam. I'm running for Waterloo Regional Council, representing Kitchener. Um, I spend my days building a healthier community uh, with a focus on children and youth, and I hope to bring that same uh, emphasis to my role uh, on Regional Council. Tonight we, we looked at a broad range of categories and a lot of those categories are reflected in my platform. I have a very detailed platform with lots of different ideas that I'm presenting and I hope that you do get a chance to check it out. Uh, I have it posted on my website at camerondearlove.ca uh, and some great videos also that will uh, help to uh, explain some of the ideas and make them more accessible. Uh, broadly, my focus is on triple bottom line thinking and bringing triple bottom line thinking to regional government. And what that means is that we don't make any decision uh, without understanding what the, the costs and the benefits are uh, fiscally, socially, and environmentally. And, and that will ripple through all of the policy that we, uh, that we, we work through. Now tonight I heard uh, a little bit uh, about some of the challenges that people are having, but also some really good ideas uh, about solutions. At the accessibility uh, table, uh, we heard about the cost of bus fare and, and the way that the cost of bus fare uh, can keep people excluded from the community and that's that's a major issue and something that we have to work work through. It has financial implications because uh, it keeps people out of the labor market uh, but also so the social impact of isolation and we have to work uh, against isolation and marginalization in our community at all times. At the Stronger Neighborhoods uh, table, uh, I heard about the, we really talked about the process for understanding what the communities uh, ideas and, and challenges are and and that's something that someone with a community uh, voice can bring someone who will work with uh, the city work with the uh, the neighborhoods work with the community to find solutions I see that my time is running out uh, so I, I do hope that you uh, uh, maybe uh, seek me out afterwards and we can we can have a, a broader conversation uh, but I just say that you know the, the issues that I heard tonight and the ideas that I'm presenting um, I think we really need somebody that has a, a strong community voice, a strong presence in the community, and, and someone who can bring those ideas forward to Regional Council, and, and that's what I'll be presenting. Thank Good you very evening, much. and I want to commend the Social Planning Council, the citizens and the groups that participated tonight in a very vibrant discussion. Local government provides the services 
of how we relate to each other and how we define ourselves as a community. So the conversations tonight I found very important. I specifically started at the environmental uh, roundtable because it, it's been a priority for me for a long time. And what I heard was that what is lacking in so many bright ideas on the environment and how we can be more sustainable really is the lack of money, and I would tell you as well the lack of will. The environment needs to be a priority that is measured in every decision that regional council makes. It was back in 2010 that Hudson, Quebec demonstrated that municipalities do have the necessary legislative authority to ban pesticides. But Quebec also has a Bill of Environmental Rights. And David Suzuki, I learned tonight, has the Blue Dot Initiative, which is looking at an environmental Bill of Rights that would be part of the Charter of Rights. I think this is something definitely worth investigating. Education and awareness is all around us, as well as social in innovation. It has strongly been my view for a long time that government needs to know when to give the community a hand up and when to get out of the way. Social services and social innovation, again, define who we are as a community. I vow to work as a member of the regional team to make sure your voices are heard and that no one is left behind in a sustainable community that is going to welcome 100,000 more residents over the next, year, the next 10 years. So it's really important that we keep the balance right. I believe that the region is coming from a position of power, but we need to keep that balance right. So I'm here to ask for your support for a seat on Regional Council on October 27th. Thank you very much. Evening. I'm Wayne Wettlaufer, and I'm running for a seat on a Regional Council representing Kitchener. Do you know, first of all, I, I need to thank the Social Planning Council uh, for this tonight. But uh, a society is measured by how it treats its most vulnerable. And in Waterloo Region, we are very fortunate. We have done that quite well. However, we are facing a period where we may not be able to continue to do that at all times. As the regional government grows, we are incurring a great deal of debt. The only way to, to solve some of that problem is to eliminate wasteful spending. We have to have a target in our spending, we have to have a target in our debt so that the vulnerable are not left behind. One of the things that I have noticed tonight in particular is that many people who feel vulnerable, whether that be by poverty or whether it be by being a new immigrant, uh, they are finding that they don't always have access to the information they need. We have a number of stakeholders, we have a number of organizations, and nobody seems to be able to, to get the information that they need from government because of the number of silos that government has. We need to break down those silos. We need to be able to help the people who need the help in this region. If I'm elected on regional council, on October 27th, I vow to you that I will do what I can to ensure that the vulnerable are not left behind. Thank you.